It has touched the lives of nearly every person in the world. It's been one of the most stubborn diseases in human history and has cost the human race so very much. Cancer. It can strike without warning and with no mercy. Your body's first and best line of health defense against any disease is a strong immune system. Though the human immune system is extraordinarily effective, it can become overwhelmed and sometimes, as is the case with all forms of cancer once it is established, the immune system is simply unaware that a war is being waged against the body by these undetected cancer cells. This is because cancer cells, insidious and adaptable, are actually your own cells, self-cells, that divide and multiply without the normal controls of a person's immune system. For many years, people have fought cancer with chemicals, radiation, pharmaceuticals, and other methods with limited effectiveness and often with drastic side effects. But what if you could enlist the body's own immune system to fight the war against cancer? The scientists at Morphogenesis have been seeking this answer for decades. And through their research, today, it can be done. We begin with a small circular piece of DNA known as an expression plasmid. Using specialized enzymes as the tools, this plasmid is cut at precise sites in order to introduce a single gene, a single gene carrying a carefully coded message to the patient's immune system. This new plasmid now contains the strategic set of instructions that will carry out the morphogenesis mission to activate the immune system to recognize and destroy cancer cells. Millions of our gene-loaded plasmids are deployed through a simple injection into the cancerous lesion or tumor. Some of the tumor cells absorb the plasmid. The plasmids are transported to the nucleus of those cancer cells and pass along this strategic code. Now these cancer cells, which in reality are self-cells, have a new set of instructions. They've been repurposed to create a foreign antigen, a molecule capable of inducing an immune response. The bacterial gene carried in by our plasmid is transcribed into RNA. The RNA moves into the cytoplasm of the cell and is translated into the bacterial protein, an antigen. Now the cancer cell wall expresses the new antigen, basically a flag, that signals the body with a new message. This is a non-self cell and it needs to be destroyed. Trillions of events are set into motion as the body's natural defenses now see the newly modified cancer cells as foreign invaders. First, cells within the body called antigen-presenting cells lock onto the signal being broadcast on the newly modified cell wall. They engulf and digest those tumor cells. Every protein in and on those tumor cells, even the proteins that are not antigens, are digested into fragments. Then, the antigen-presenting cells, true to their name, present those tiny fragments on their surface. The immune response is now ready to create and deploy its lymphocyte warriors. B cells churn out millions of tumor-specific antibodies. The killer T cells carry out their mission to not only destroy the modified tumor cells, but also to adapt to locate and kill previously ignored cancer cells. This happens because the antigen-presenting cells have exposed each of the proteins contained within all of the cancer cells. They're now revealed as non-self cells and attacked. Once the target tumor is under control and being eliminated, the lymphocyte arsenal continues to search for and kill cancer cells throughout the body. The immune system has worked in harmony like an orchestra playing a powerful anthem scored by morphogenesis science to a devastating conclusion. 
to me, the simpler something is, the less that can go wrong with it. So that this simple method is extremely powerful. And it's really difficult sometimes to get across the implications of the technology and the ramifications of just setting out this one simple thing. All we do is create the priming event for the immune system. The immune system does everything else.